I got the opportunity to pick up a spot in the Texas Mile and I snagged it. It's a mile long race that's all about mile an hour. We're going to put a lot of power to the ground and try and push this big brick behind me uh, up to 170, 180 miles an hour, compete with the exotics. Uh, it's a it's got its own set of challenges, and of course we have no timeline. Uh, we got three weeks to get ready here, and we're already a week and a half in. Uh, we got the truck pretty good and tore down, as you can see in the shot behind me. We got a lot of uh, a lot of changes to make before we hit the road and head to Texas. Uh, you know, those changes are around making the truck be able to sustain that high horsepower output for a long period of time, and then uh, on top of that, we have a speed which is 80 miles an hour over the design speed of the chassis. So the gearing is not optimal. We had to take the five speed up to a six speed and change the rear gear to a 342. And even then we're still stretching a lot of RPM to, to make our target speed. Um, it's it, it's going to be a challenge. Now let me take you around and show you some of the stuff that we've done to, to get the truck ready for the mile. You know, a 373 gear set works really well for towing, pulling your camper or trailer. If you're gonna try and run 150 to 180 miles an hour, not so ideal, okay? We don't want that kind of high RPM up at that speed. We want the truck working in its power band. And its power band is really from 3,000 RPM to 3,500 RPM. That's where it does really well. You know, in an effort to keep it in its power band, what we've done is change the factory gear set, that 373, out for a 342. And that's gonna spin the engine a little bit slower, keep it in its power band up at those higher speeds. We've also, upgraded the transmission from a 5-speed transmission with a 0.7 overdrive to a 6-speed transmission with a 0.61 overdrive. So we've got a, you know, a smaller gear in the rear end to drive the engine slower, and we've got a smaller gear in the transmission to slow things down. So you know, we're doing our best to cut RPM off this thing at that speed and keep it in its power band, keep it happy, and if we can do that, we can keep EGTs manageable at that 1,000 horsepower plus mark. If you want to go fast, you got to have power. There's no getting around it. We need a lot of power. So we had our buddies at Exergy Engineering supply us with a 10 mil stroker pump on top of the CP3 that we have in the valley. So we got a lot of high pressure fuel and we're going to upgrade our turbocharger in the valley. You can see that's gone. This truck runs a big twin turbo set. We're going to go to one of our 67.7 mil stealths in the valley and then use a 91 millimeter S500 as our primary. We're going to push a lot of air through this engine and a lot of fuel. <laughs> it's it's going to get a lot of snort. Uh, to cool off all that boost, we're going to switch from our air to air intercooler and go to an air to water intercooler. So after we get done with the fuel system stuff and get things buttoned up here, this truck goes off to WC Fab to have those guys do the air to water setup. Now the goal there is to cut the temperature off of the air charge that goes into the motor. If we can do that, we can cut EGTs down, keep the piston temps down, and have a good chance of keeping this truck alive on multiple one mile passes. It was quite a challenge being able to uh, put the air to water intercooler under the hood of this truck. Typically on pulling trucks, um, in the previously we've, we've used them a lot and they get put on the weight bar and it's easy, you know, you got lots of room to deal with things and you can have pipes that are really easy to put together and work on and uh, being it doesn't have a weight bar and all that kind of stuff that goes with the pulling truck, it had to be under the hood of the, uh, of the drag truck. It was definitely a fun project to get all that stuff to fit and make it to where it's easy to work on. Not only does it have to function and be easy to work on, but it's got to it's got to look you know visibly appealing and people got to see it. like that's that's really that's a work of art you know almost. I'm glad to be a part of it and I'm glad uh, that Nick has us be a part of his builds because it's really cool what he does and you know setting some records like this is going to be awesome. It's going to be good for the industry. We're planning on going 180 miles an hour or more maybe, I don't know. Um, so we need to build a tonneau cover. We can't just use a run-of-the-mill tonneau cover that's got leather on it and straps and Velcro and all that stuff because, you know, God knows things will probably fly apart or fall off or who knows. I don't want to be that guy that leaves a tonneau cover on the track. So we built this out of uh, high-density polyethylene or rigid. It's a half-inch thick. This stuff's nasty. Uh, really solid. We're going to tape it all up, keep the air off the truck. Pretty much gone over every nook and cranny, you know, the, the holes on the bed. We're going to tape this all off, tape the roll bar off, 
I'm just trying to keep air from getting into the truck anywhere it can. Okay, so you can see we got some monster wheels and tires on this thing. These are 22 by 10s. Unfortunately, I do have a slight offset. They're 33 inches tall. Now you might be thinking, well, you wanna go really fast. Why the hell do you have these heavy wheels and tires on the thing? And why are they sitting out in the wheel well like that? Isn't there a better wheel and tire selection you can go with? Um, <clears throat> the answer is yes, there's a better wheel and tire selection we can go with. Unfortunately, there's not a better gear set we can go with. So 342 to one is the lowest gear set that we can get for the 11 and a half inch carrier. And what that means is that we need a lot of tire to keep our RPM low. Even though we have a six speed upgrade and we have those 342 gears, we still need as much tire as we can get to keep this thing in its rev range. And we're still gonna be tacking out. You know, if we go 185 miles an hour, we're gonna be approaching 4,000 RPM. So I, I prefer to keep the truck as close to 3,200 RPM as possible. Unfortunately, it's a compromise, okay? Okay, if you're gonna, if you're gonna do any competition that is high speed related, you're probably gonna wanna get yourself a few rolls of this masking tape. The idea is just to cover up any surface or any orifice that would allow wind into the engine compartment or under the truck. Now what I've done is I've taken a stock 2001 grill off the Chevy and just black masking tape the whole thing. Controlling the coolant temperature is an issue, then we're gonna start to peel back and allow some, uh, allow some wind to get through and cool the truck off. But we can always let off on the first few passes if things get, get a little on the warm side. Remember, we also do not have an air-to-air -air intercooler up front, so there's no reason we need to let air through other than to get to the radiator. All right, so we're back up front and we're on the power side of things. You know, this is where we're a little bit more comfortable. We got our twin kit piping back from the guys at WC Fab. Um, they, they did a lot in a very short amount of time for us. Um, you know, we got that air-to-air -air intercooler out. We have an air-to-water intercooler in its place. I'll direct your attention over here. This is our Stealth 67 turbocharger. This is gonna give us a bigger turbine, bigger compressor wheel, a lot more ability to move air in the, in the main choke point of a twin set, which is in the valley. So we're, we're really hoping to run this system efficiently over the 20 second pass and uh, keep EGTs down. That's gonna be a big focus for Owen. We're gonna have that, that talk about EGTs. Now, this is almost a towing situation, you know, where we wanna make sure the truck lasts. We wanna make sure that he's not running 1600 degrees down the track. Um, we got all our data logger stuff set up and the guys are just plumbing that air to water system. So uh, the water lines are something we have to do here. We got the water lines one run from the tank back there. Up here you can see we got two big one inch, one inch feeds, or actually these are the returns and then the feeds come in from the bottom and that water works its way up the tank here. This system should be a lot better at controlling EGTs than our previous system. At least I freaking hope so, it's been a lot of work. So it's 1.30 on Tuesday. Owen is hoping to have this thing on the trailer and be on his way down to Texas by seven o'clock tomorrow morning. That means we gotta get all this stuff buttoned up, hopefully get the truck on the dyno, just verify that it runs and does what it's supposed to do, then get it boxed up and ready for him to take off first thing in the morning. It's gonna be a stretch. We're in Beeville, Texas at the Texas Mile. Owen's getting the truck all cleaned up, then got in late last night, working on a tune right now. We gotta get to tech, and then get the truck set up and make our first qualifying pass. And once Owen gets qualified to run between 145 and 165 miles an hour, then he can get his big boy bracelet and uh, go for the gold. The Texas Mile is an event held twice a year at Chase Field. It's a spot that was built in the 40s as a naval air base, closed down in the 90s still used for a little bit of aviation, and of course, for the mile. The mile attracts hundreds of cars, mostly high-performance gas stuff, Corvettes, Camaros, exotics, a couple of trucks, and quite a few motorcycles. We're definitely an exception. There are no other diesel trucks at the event this year, but we're expecting to run just as fast as some of these high-performance gassers. We want to put the herd on a couple of Corvettes, Camaros, and maybe a Lamborghini. Our goal is to break the last diesel pickup truck record set at the mile five years ago by Greg Hogue. This is a run in a Cummins powered Dodge Project X at 167 miles per hour. We're on the bleeding edge, so the first runs are going to be shakedown runs. We got to see how it goes. 
Our first run down the mile, we really don't know what to expect. Owen can't go faster than 165 miles an hour, so he has to keep a close eye on the data logger. He's going to push the truck as far as he feels comfortable without exceeding that speed. So he gets up to 162 on the first pass. We get back and look at the data, and the truck clearly has more in it. We got a couple of lockup issues to sort out, but once we do that, we make our next pass. Turns out, we didn't really solve the lockup problems. The truck still doesn't want to lock the converter clutch, and by running in tow haul mode instead of regular, we have disallowed the truck from going into sixth gear and capped our speed out at 139 miles an hour. We get back in line, make one more run that day. In this last run, we get the truck to behave quite a bit better than it had the first two runs. There's still a little bit left on the table. We got the record at the end of the first day, 169.7 miles an hour, and we still have more in the bag for tomorrow. With all this power, you can't just floorboard it right out of the gates. Kind of get out there a little bit, let it shift through a couple gears, and then punch it and go. Day two of the Texas Mile. We are fighting some issues with the truck. I think, uh, I think we're getting them under control, though. We got some torque converter clutch lockup issues in sixth gear. Um, and then I think we're running into a speed limiter in the TCM at about 170 miles an hour. Um, just all stuff that, uh, you know, we just haven't seen before. We haven't gone that fast. So we're ironing the bugs out as we encounter them. This will be our fourth run. And uh, the truck has a lot more in it. Uh, we went 169.7 yesterday. So we got the record yesterday, fastest diesel truck at the, at the Texas mile. Um, just by two miles an hour though. So we're looking to put a few more mile an hour between us and the record. Uh, we'll see how today goes. The grid is where everyone lines up for the mile. It's just 10 lanes of traffic and they run them lanes by lanes just like you would at a drag strip. It generally takes two to three hours between turns. There's quite a few cars here. One of the parts about this run is that we collect data and we make our analysis on the next pass using that data. And we have, uh, you know, we have some good data from EFI Live. We also have some good data from our uh, XDL data logger from Fleece. Uh, one of the modifications that we made for this event was to put an air to water intercooler on the truck um, in order to, to keep our intake charge temps down. You know, our thought was that the pass was going to take 20 seconds or so. And it turns out it's anywhere from 26 to 30 seconds, depending on how quick Owen uh, brings the truck out of the hole. So it's under power for a long time. And uh, EGTs are climbing, you know, they're getting up there, 1650 to 1830, depending on how much power we're putting to the truck. And our, our charge air temps coming out of that uh, turbocharging system uh, can be north of 600 degrees. And what we're seeing is that air to water intercooler system is peeling just a ton of heat off that intake charge, uh, 450 degrees, and allows us to keep that front of the grill taped up and keep all the air out of the front of the motor. Interestingly, we're not, uh, we're not picking up engine coolant temp. So the engine coolant temp is controllable, even running the truck full throttle for 25 seconds at a click with the whole grill taped off. There's enough air coming through that uh, bumper underneath the truck and through all the little pieces and parts that we haven't taped up to keep it cool. So it's been a, it's been a real learning experience. It's kind of fun to, to get challenged again and, and really, uh, really push the envelope. The time has come now for our fourth run. And this is where we're going to try and put some mile an hour between us and the 167 record that used to exist, now 169.7. So we're hoping to we're hoping to get up in the 170s here. The guy's going to wave him on. He's going to walk it out of the hole. You notice he's pretty light on the throttle. Truck's in two-wheel drive. So, you know, as he as he gets rolling, you hear it squeal the tires a little bit at 88, 90 miles an hour. Or then he, then he pounds it. Going to go up through the gears. As soon as he gets into sixth gear, he's really going to lay into it. Everything's going to go to full boost, 65 pounds of boost. Halfway through the mile, we're at that happy RPM for the motor. In the second half of the mile, we are really running out of RPM. The gear change, the tire change, the overdrive chains, all those things that we made uh, to get the truck to this point, we're just running out of them. You know, 172 miles an hour is what this pass ends up at, and we're at 3,900 RPM, EGTs are at 1,850. Uh, the truck is just, if we push it any further, it's going to break. I would rather walk home with the victory 
and the record and be able to come back and shoot for 180 next fall than have to pick up broken pieces of my truck off the track. Good solid pass out of it. Uh, got the converter locking how we wanted to and once it locked it, it got down and boogied um, and we made a one, 172 pass today. Awesome learning experience. We have big plans for the next one. I'm glad you guys could join us on our adventure.